Do you know how Netflix became such a giant library of movies and shows? Even though its idea was rejected by many experts. How did the founders pick up the name Netflix.com? Who were its competitors in the initial days? How did Netflix raise millions of dollars and ultimately acquired millions of customers? This book summary is a must-watch if you have any digital business or are planning to launch one. Because in this book summary, I've shared amazing business lessons that any digital business can benefit from. Alright, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Lesson 1. Trust facts more than you do opinions. Opinions of so-called experts have killed many dreams. Back when the author was trying to get funding for Netflix, his idea was rejected by a potential investor who had a background in DVD technology. He said that the plan to sell DVDs was rubbish. In case you don't know, Netflix wasn't always a subscription-based streaming service. Today, we all enjoy various TV shows and movies while slouching on our couches. But back then, around 1995, people didn't have fast internet connections. So people bought DVDs of their favorite movies. That was also the time of the dot-com bubble. Internet was a new technology then. Everyone was talking about it in the same way people talk about crypto today. The idea of selling DVDs sounded illogical to many investors as the newer technology was around the corner. And the author faced quite a lot of problems due to this. Imagine if the founders of Netflix gave up on their idea. There would be no Netflix then. But the author believed in his idea as the internet hadn't developed yet. And those who had an internet connection faced a lot of issues downloading movies. The point here is, if you have data and the facts, then regardless of what anyone says, proceed. The author says that nobody really knows anything about the future. Yes, we all do share opinions. But we can't guarantee anything. There are always multiple factors that may result in an entirely different future that nobody had imagined or expected. Often young minds imagine big. But when they listen to the experts, they lose all of their hope. It's good to have opinions. I'm not saying that you mindlessly delude yourself. Gather data first. Got a big startup idea. Validate it first. Take baby steps. Keep gathering unbiased data and you will be able to figure out what to do next. Lesson 2. Choose a catchy name for your business. And make sure that its domain name is available. Often new internet entrepreneurs make this mistake. They spend hours deciding on a perfect name for their business. And when it comes to creating a website, they find that someone else has already registered that domain name. If your business name is too common, then chances are somebody owns its domain. The author made the same mistake. He made a list of some names along with his team, for example, rent.com, but later realized that it was already taken. Fortunately, he had quite a long list. And finally, the author and his team decided to keep Netflix.com. Again, it's important to check that you are not using a business name that is a trademark or is owned by another company. Once that is checked, make sure that the name is easy to spell and remember. The author advises something like Google or Facebook. These names only have two syllables, and thus they are easy to speak, spell, and remember. If your name is harder to remember, you are going to need a lot of marketing. If your name is too simple, you may again need a lot of marketing to stand out from the competition. Don't think that if you choose a cool name, your business will succeed. Name isn't everything. But still, it's a good practice to choose something catchy and easy to recall. Lesson 3. Culture is not what you say, it's what you do. Often when the founders are asked about the culture of their company, they use a lot of fancy words to describe their culture. But what they really do is tell their opinion. And opinions are often wrong if they aren't backed by any data. Work culture in any company is defined by the people of the organization. If the employees in a company don't have any common goals and motivation, then there is no culture at all. As a founder, one must know what the culture of his company is. The goals of every individual in a company must be tightly aligned with the common goal. But it's also important that you allow them enough freedom to make decisions. Avoid being overly restrictive. To build a great culture and ultimately a great company, you need innovators who know how to work together. Focus on the big picture. If you are always deciding for your employees, then you will not be free to think innovatively. If you are always doing all the work, you won't get time to do things that may scale your company. 
Repeating, culture is defined by the people. If you want to build a particular type of culture, hire such people whose life goals are aligned with your goals. No great culture is built simply by using fancy business lingo. Lesson 4. Don't confuse your customers by offering them too many choices. You may look resourceful by providing lots of things and at the same time lots of choices. But your customers will get confused and simply start ignoring you. Don't ask your customers to use a lot of brain power to make decisions. The author realized this quickly. There was a time when Netflix was selling DVDs using both rental as well as a subscription model. This created confusion. Rental or subscription. The founders of Netflix decided to drop the rental model later as they didn't want to confuse the customers. Remember, too many choices often lead to no choice. Every business should try to make things as simple as possible for the customers. Relating this idea with building a story brand book, offering too many choices is like asking your customers to run on a red mill every time they make a choice. No customer wants to do that. Keep your choices to a minimum if possible. I recommend that you know your audience well before you make any big decision for your business. If a particular option is not helping either you or your customer, it's better to drop it off. Lesson 5. Make life easy for your customers. Life is already hard, to begin with. As a business owner, one must try to make life easier for its customers. Netflix wasn't as it is today. They didn't have any recommendation system. So the viewers could only choose from a limited number of movies. The founders of Netflix wanted people to spend more time enjoying the movies they would like. It meant more money for them and more entertainment for people. In short, this was a win-win opportunity. These days, almost all recommendation systems are powered by artificial intelligence. If you go to Amazon, it starts recommending products to you based on your buying history and a lot of other hidden factors. Similarly, Netflix also recommends TV shows and movies based on your watch history and interests. These systems want that advanced back in that time. But the point worth noting is that the idea is not new. 20 years ago, people started thinking about it. The key idea behind it was, the more time customers spent on their platform, the more money the owners made. And this is true even today. YouTube also follows the same ideas these days. Still, it's a win-win. It makes our lives easy. Some people may argue that it's not good for our lives as it makes decisions for us. A lot of debate is going on this topic. It's true though. If you are not making choices for yourself, the recommendation system will make it for you. Lesson 6. Don't depend too much on a particular technology. Most businesses these days rely on technology. And it's a great thing. Softwares these days save business owners a lot of time. But the problem is, technology changes and grows rapidly. Netflix was dependent on DVD technology in its initial days. But as we know, today, nobody uses DVDs. First DVDs got obsolete. Then people started using pen drives. After a few years, we can see today that they have almost become useless. People today use cloud storage to save their data. We can see that Netflix now uses advanced AWS cloud technology to deliver high-quality TV shows and serials to our gadgets. They adapted with time. Imagine if Netflix was still selling DVDs today. They would go bankrupt and fail. Adaptability is important in any business. If you are a business owner, make sure you provide something more and don't rely just on technology. It can be copied easily too. Every business needs to stand out in the competition and thus needs to offer something unique. That's the reason Netflix keeps making changes in its UI and the recommendation system using a lot of data sets collected from millions of users all over the planet. Lesson 7. Personalization is the key to hooking people on your platform. One reason Netflix became so big is that they deliver a personalized experience. The movie recommended to you might be different than the one recommended to your friend. So how does Netflix figure out what you would like? Simply, they track a few parameters like How much time do you spend on a particular genre? What type of movies do you watch the most? And a lot many. The artificial intelligence learns the behavior of the user. And it keeps collecting as many data points as it can get. So the next time Netflix suggests an awesome movie, don't be surprised. That was served based on your behavioral data. 
What does this mean for business people? Yes, personalize your campaigns. The more people relate to you, the more they will return. If you find out exactly what your audience likes and want to see, you have a recipe for exponential growth and success in your business. Lesson 8. It's tricky in business to figure out what to spend money on. How you spend your money in business determines how much you will grow. The author says, instead of furniture, they spend money on technology. Most business owners, once they start turning some profits from their business start spending money on useless things like furniture. You see, no matter what your profession is, humans find money appealing, and that's why it requires a certain mindset to handle it well. Often people don't know how to handle their impulses and tendencies. Thus, they spend a lot of time money buying things that fulfill their innermost desires. Talking about the author, he was smart. He knew that technology can help scale their business. So he didn't waste his time buying a lot of furniture. He had around 2 million in funding. It's challenging when you have that much money. Your mind goes in different directions. These days Netflix raises billions of dollars in funds. Imagine what the author was thinking after he got his first funding. No matter how much the money, it's tricky to figure out how to use it wisely. Lesson 9. The hustling phase is the most interesting part of the journey. Whenever you try to do something new and challenging in life, you find yourself struggling. You have to hustle to get what you want. Often, when we don't get the desired results, we start thinking about how painful and unfair life is. We dream big but people reject our ideas. Even our families and friends don't believe that our ideas can grow into something big. We often hear successful stories of startups that made it big in the market, but things usually are not as simple as they sound. Many things helped in building Netflix as it is right now. The truth is, if you are doing something extraordinary, it will be challenging in the beginning. Things are easier when you are following a proven path. The author's ideas were rejected many times. He had to make many tough decisions. But when you look back, you realize that it was an amazing ride with lots of ups and downs. The fun part was the journey, not the destination. If you are in a struggling phase right now, then don't worry too much about it. Later, it will become a part of your story. And you will be writing that story in a book in the same way the author did. Now it's your turn. What are you biggest learnings from this video? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to read the full summary of this book, visit wisbuscout.com and sign up. Hard to believe, but it's truly free. And yet better than any paid subscription. Link is in the description below. Thank you for watching.